the Medical University of South Carolina. It's one of the oldest medical schools in the United States. The Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences has approximately 13 divisions where there is typically a commingling of research scientists and clinicians. We actually are a very research-intensive department that has worldwide impact in terms of developing and disseminating new treatments. Translation of research into practice is incredibly important in terms of developing innovative and new treatments. There's really two levels of translation, both of which the Department of Psychiatry at MUSC has excelled in. The first is translating basic science findings into the clinic, so taking that molecule or that proof of concept into a clinical trial. And then there's this whole area of taking things from an academic, rigorously controlled experiment in, in that sort of setting out into practice in the community. Investigators in the Department of Psychiatry at, at MUSC have made great strides at both levels of translation. We were a translational group before the word translational got hot uh, in that we uh, do mostly research where we take ideas from brain imaging and then either test whether those circuits or the regions of the brain really um, are active in a behavior and then we try to come up with new treatments based on circuits that we identify in imaging. Our first and biggest um, success was in the area of treating depression. Uh, we did the first non-NIH TMS trial here almost 20 years ago. I had the first idea that we might be able to use transcranial magnetic stimulation to treat depression and we did the first proof of concept study. My idea then was that perhaps a non-invasive way of stimulating that doesn't require anesthesia, doesn't produce a seizure, and doesn't have any cognitive side effects, that that would have clinical utility and it certainly does. We have about 40 different studies. We're not really wedded to any single disease. Any disease in the brain that we think we know the circuit that we can modify. Um, we're going after it with non-invasive brain stimulation to see if we can come up with a new treatment. The Sleep Molecular Laboratory, we basically engage in investigation, scientific investigation of uh, sleep models. We are uh, trying to find a cure for narcolepsy. We have models of um, narcolepsy in mice and we are using molecular techniques to uh, basically address this problem. One out of 2,000 Americans suffering from narcolepsy is a terrible uh, disabled disease that uh, basically has no um, other treatment than pharmacological. Similar to Parkinson's disease, narcolepsy is a neurodegenerative disease. So we are using these animal models and gene therapy to address this problem. We are now using a very sophisticated technique called optogenetics, is the use of light into the brain to stimulate it specifically neurons. While with the lasers, with, with light, we can actually stimulate these neurons that uh, control the sleep and put directly an animal to sleep at will. The National Crime Victims Research and Treatment Center is a division in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences here at the medical school. We conduct um, national research and we also provide uh, evidence-based treatment. We have developed over the last several years several web-based courses to train mental health providers how to deliver evidence-based treatment to their patients with psychological trauma. One of the courses already has learners in 71 different countries. Our first one that we did uh, is trauma-focused cognitive behavior therapy designed to provide training to those who provide services to children. Uh, we have one that is specific for working with combat-related veterans and active duty personnel funded by the Department of the Navy, and it provides an evidence-based training. We have a one that calls Helping Heroes, and it is designed for those who work with firefighters who've experienced trauma. So we have a really wide variety of evidence-based courses that we offer. So much of what's happened in psychology and psychiatry has been sort of a one-on-one -on -one based intervention. But multisystemic therapy really tries to look at the social environment, the family, the community, and it's very evidence-based. We've had almost two decade now relationship with Muhambila University in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and I've worked closely with the Department of Psychiatry there. There's a, really an enormous number of faculty who uh, volunteer their time. A lot of the physicians go overseas to Africa, to Latin America to do work. 
We were interested in promoting the health and well-being of kids at high risk for a variety of different sort of problems. That ultimately led to the development of a dance and drum troupe. That was a direct extrapolation of the research coming out of multisystemic therapy. I can guarantee you that no one was expecting the department to be engaged in developing a drum and dance troupe. But that same drum and dance troupe ended up having an impact on AIDS in Africa because we learned that mode of communication is one of the most effective modes of transmitting information. In some respects, we're a very large department, but we're organized in smaller divisions. And those smaller divisions bring people together from diverse scientific and often cultural background. That creates this unique culture of creativity that leads to innovative research. We are literally changing what's possible in the world of psychiatry.